Hello and welcome to Your Property Empire. I'm Chris Gray. On tonight's show, is buying the worst property in the street a wise investment strategy? How easy is it to get council approval for your renovations? And is the stress likely to give you an early heart attack? And what lies in store for our property markets in 2014? So those stories are more in the next 30 minutes. But first up, rates are on hold yet again for another month. So is that a good or a bad sign for our property markets? Now joining me tonight to give his opinions is Charles Tarby, Chairman and Owner of Century 21 Australasia. Now I feel as if I haven't been here. I've been away for two weeks and when I was on my deathbed in uh, getting over the man flu, that purple house in the UK, apparently it's mine. Was I bagging you out again? You were I? bagging well, me you out. you know, there's been a number of shows that you haven't been here this year and you've given me the opportunity to bag you out plenty of times. It's, a, it's amazing that people can actually so. do a house like that. Well, it's I ridiculous, said to them it? it must have been your home because you occasionally wear purple I, I've on got the show my purple and on. there you are. Exactly. It's a really individual taste. How do people do that if they're thinking of the future? They're probably thinking about living there for the rest of their lives. That's probably all that is. And, yeah. I, and I understand that. But it doesn't really bode well when you're thinking about selling in the future. It's a very, very uh, specialised taste, if you like. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So rates on hold, is that a, a sign of anything, do you think? Oh, actually, um, the talk is that they might come down. I really hope that that talk goes away. I would like to see the rates stay and start to climb. Now, I think that, that the issue behind the rates right now is that people, are, uh, if they're not factoring in the possibility of a rate hike, they're going to find themselves in trouble next year. So people who are buying at today's interest rates could be sitting there and 1% uh, is a lot of money when you're, when you're buying your first home if, people add, if, if the bank decides to slowly add that on there. And I think with you looking at the US markets and other markets growing, I think there's a possibility that the rates might climb. And this is a dangerous thing with the media because with the media we've got to come up with stories, haven't we? We've got to have something to talk about and the more sensationalising it is the better but there's a massive danger on that, that people can get the wrong message and do the wrong thing. Exactly. But you can go either way with those stories. I remember when the rates came down to around 6.5% and there was a rate drop and, and the media put out there that rates only dropped by instead of saying where they were compared to, you know, a five years ago, 10 or 15 or 20 years ago. Yes, sensationalising it does give it some energy, but the, the truth is I really think we need to be careful about what might happen to rates. Exactly. And anyway, now it's time for purchase or pass. Now, tonight we've got a two bedroom unit in a block of nine units, 11.1 kilometres from the CBD and less than 100 metres to the action, so it's right in the heart of the suburb. Now, whilst the property has never been renovated, or sorry, it has been renovated internally, the exterior is pretty unloved and stands out from the other two brand new buildings that have been built either side of it. The striding levies are just $525 a quarter, but there are plans to rejuvenate the block. And so there's likely to be an increase in the levies or a special levy at some point. So we've got the building there and you can see on the right hand side there's a bit of a brand new building and a bit of landscaping there. So just in terms of um, general things, I mean obviously we've got a nice small block of uh, nine, it's close to the action, nothing to do. Um, is, is Worst House and the Best Street a good plan do you think? Or are people going to be going for these brand new things? No, I think you said all of the things that are actually positive in it. You know, small block, it's a, a, a good street, uh, nothing to do inside of the property, two better, uh, car parking space, all the right things, 11 kilometres from the city. And looking at the price range that I've seen it in, I think that's actually a pretty good buy. Uh, and if they have to do some work on the building collectively, nine apartments, it means that it may cost a little bit more, but I think it'll add a tremendous amount to the overall value of the property. So it, when I look at that and I look at the possible the rents and also so the sales in that area, lots of two bedders are going for higher prices than what I'm seeing and, there. And that's the thing, because looking at the brand new ones next door, then I think a one bedroom unit would be around 600 grand plus, a two bedroom about 800 and this is 660. Yes, yes. So look, it's, a, it's really a walk up start. So I, I reckon I'd have a go at that one, Chris. Yep. Yeah. Now, obviously it's not the prettiest block. Do you worry about those things? Because when I came to Australia, I found all these ugly blocks and I wouldn't go anywhere near them. Yeah. But after a while, you've got to realise you've got to get into an ugly block, otherwise you'll never well, get you anything. You won't get into anything. And, and the thing is that those ugly blocks become quite uh, unique after a while if they stay that way. And then they become quite uh, chic. Chic? Chic? Chic. 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 Is it chic? Now, the other thing that I picked up... 
was um, the rent was only about four and a quarter percent. Right. Now I know in this suburb typically it's about half a percent less. Yeah. But another thing to think about now is where suddenly this property might have been six hundred grand say six months ago and now it's six sixty. The rent doesn't change because there is a time lag between the capital growth moving and the rents moving. I mean you know better than anybody because of the lifestyle you lead in terms of where you live. Uh, the the value of the property doesn't necessarily reflect reflect what the rent's going to be like. And you know if you want really rental return then you need to move away from those areas you need to move further out so I wouldn't be looking at that I'd be looking at that one more as a capital growth potential type of property that's where I'd go so that one. purchase or pass through? Yeah I'd buy that one wow. we, we, if you could fund me if I could help me yeah if you could help me. I'm well spent <laughs> Now, buying one of the cheapest properties in the street is always a good move, I think, especially when you've got really good comparisons next door. The Strider are keen to upgrade the exterior building, which I think is great if you've got the extra cash. So for me, I'm definitely going to purchase as well. Anyway, now we're joined by Tom Panos. I think he's just flown in from Queensland. How are you doing, Tom? OK, we're just trying to find Tom as we speak. He's probably, so, yeah, like, yeah, he's probably on Queensland time. No, I think he probably... He's, probably at the pub knowing Tom. Friday night he's out having a good time by now. Lots of auctions tomorrow so he'll be getting his uh, vocal cords all juiced up. Wonderful. Anyway, I, I just heard that I think Tom's finished his glass of red wine and he should be with us <laughs> any second now. Welcome Tom. Hi Charles, hi Chris. <laughs> and we thought you were in the pub Tom. Uh, I could hear everything that you were saying. I was patiently waiting here, just waiting for my go and there you guys started. I've heard all about your purple, I've heard about Charles's assessment on what's going to happen with rates and now I want my one minute. Fire away Tom, what have you got for us? <laughs> okay, um, from uh, Orchard Hills, actually Charles will know... Uh, yeah, Orchard Hills Tom, or Orchard, Orchard Hills, Orchard Hills. Uh, you've, got a, the, you've still got the inner west accent going. So. I have, I have, as Charles says, um, he once was talking at one of our conferences, he said to someone, oh, uh, out west uh, things aren't going so good and uh, uh, Charles's response was West is Leichhardt for you. Yeah, <laughs> I, I reckon you. these guys think that the western suburb starts at Centennial Park. Anyway, <laughs> look, let that go, Tom. Okay, so what we've got here is a totally renovated property. It's a reluctant sale. The owners are selling. It's uh, been handed down uh, over 40 years between family members. Mm -hmm. And this property, uh, good access with the M4. You can get to the Blue Mountains, where Charles would be very familiar with, but also get to the city. It's got a tennis court. It's got a pool. And it's got a price guide of 2.3 million. When I spoke to the agent, I said, that sounds like a lot of money for that part of the world. And he assured me that uh, this suburb has seen other properties that sell for $2 million and over. Yeah, that particular area, Tom, a, a strong acreage area, it's just across the road from Penrith Golf Course as well, and access to the freeway, as, uh, as you were saying, and it's only minutes into the, all the major shopping centres of Penrith, but you've got nice private acreage properties. There is a very famous property out there, Tom, it was about six storeys high, built by an Italian concreter, and uh, a gentleman that, uh, well, I think concrete was what they call the business, but it's quite, quite a massive property, still sitting out there, but that gentleman is no longer with us anymore. So. Right, well, yeah, the agent assured me, Charles, that this, is, uh, this area is the king of acreage in, in there. It, and it, it is, and I'm, and I'm surprised that, that the subdivisions haven't kicked through there because they're just across the road. Right. Sounds good. Property number two. Number two from Castle Hill, but not Castle Hill in uh, New South Wales, but Castle Hill in Townsville. I was speaking to the agent, Michelle Hyde. She's uh, from uh, Remax, a great agent too. I think she's number one or two have been up there as one of the leading agents. Uh, high twos, low threes is the price guide on it. It is the best spot in Townsville, top of the hill. It's got great views um, of Townsville and the best ocean views in Townsville. So the position's fantastic. It's been totally rebuilt in 2012. Um, uh, built in initially in 1972. So go and have a look at it. And uh, like the rest of Australia, it's been very tough over the last three, four years in these uh, uh, regions across Australia, including the Gold Coast where I've come. But uh, the confidence is back. Prices aren't going crazy, but agents are happy to see lots of people coming through open houses, which wasn't happening for two, three, four years. And look, I mean, a couple of those photos, Tom, absolutely fantastic. Looking at the pool and looking at that view, I mean, that, that really sells it straight away. Yeah, well, Chris, I'm, I'm certain that one day 
on this show, you're going to call me afterwards and you're going to ask me to get you through the property and we're going to be talking <laughs> about good, it the week it? after you've signed a contract. But you know I'm a renter, Tom, so if you can rent that to me for a thousand a week, I'll take it straight away. Oh, well, the person that sells you a house will become agent of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Now, you just come back down from uh, Queensland. What are the agents saying to you up there? Okay, so I saw uh, 20 clients over three days, uh, all on, you know, Broad Beach, uh, Surface Paradise, uh, Burley, um, and they're all saying that this is the best that they have seen it in a long time. They're not saying the prices have gone up. Not there, but what they're saying is that properties are all of a sudden are selling in a couple of weeks and they're getting geared up. January is their main season. They're getting geared up and they're really excited. Um, and I'm actually thinking to myself, from what I can see, is that the, a lot of the Sydney and Melbourne people that are very positive about what's happening in real estate in their part of the world are now heading back to the Gold Coast to see whether they can buy a nice apartment for six, seven hundred or five hundred at Surface Paradise or around there. Now, Tom, I'm not sure if your bosses from News Limited actually uh, watch the show and uh, listen to what's going on, but I've got to say that uh, your dedication to work is absolutely ridiculous. You, you unfortunately had to turn down my Christmas party to go to Queensland and go meet 20 clients, whereas well, I, I would have done, definitely been doing the opposite. Well, OK, I hope my boss is watching then. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, final couple of weeks, you're still packed out for auctions, are you? Yeah, so uh, the 21st is not going to be as big as I thought it was. I was um, sure that there was going to be vendors that were going to take advantage of going up to the last Saturday, the 21st of December. That's not the case. Tomorrow is a huge day of auctions. The 14th of December is going to be a huge day of auctions. It's been the flavour of the month. Every weekend there's lots of auction stories, stories on auctioneers, stories on the marketplace, stories on real estate. Um, I think that that's coming to its closure because we are now seeing what I think uh, the residual stock and I say it and I say it every year, December is an amazing opportunity to buy a bargain in the last two weeks. Uh, a lot of the other buyers go on holidays, others go to Westfield shopping and if you're out there at an open house you might get yourself a bargain so if you've got nothing to do get out there in the next two weeks yeah we're still buying on Christmas Eve Tom there's uh, there's always opportunity for someone that wants to sell before the Christmas well, break you're a smart buyers agent Chris good to see you Tom we'll see you again next week see, see you, Tom. you. Bye. after the break we'll be solving a viewers property investing dilemma we'll be back soon This is Jennifer Chen. She's a mum who loves buying toddler's clothes at wootsycutesy.com. Right about now, you're probably thinking, why would Jennifer be buying a quad bike called the Swamp Pig? ANZ's thinking the same thing. That's because we've got ANZ Falcon Fraud Monitoring. It can sense when a purchase doesn't look right, so you're protected. However, wherever you purchase, by credit or debit card, ANZ Card Security. My secret for adding a little style into my life? My Husqvarna Viking sewing machine. Husqvarna Viking have been around for over 140 years and remain as innovative today as they always were, allowing you to create unique clothes and add all the creative touches you want to make your house a home. Stunning cushions and of course beautiful quilts to turn your bedroom into a sanctuary. Find your secret to style today at your closest Husqvarna Viking stockist. December on History. This is the Australia we all love. This is some of the wildest coastline I think I've ever seen. Neil Oliver unlocks the history of our ever-changing landscape in the all-new series Coast Australia. Coal was a much more potent form of power. Their inventions changed the course of history. The premiere of the Industrial Revolution. The Rapa Nui built these silent sentiments. But how and why? Easter Island and Enigma. December on History. If Labor is to be competitive at the next election, it needs to muscle up to the Coalition on Economic Management. Our guest this week on Australian Agenda is the Shadow Treasurer, Chris Bowen. From the non-sale of Grain Corp through to taxation reform, there are huge issues in the economic space. Will Bowen advocate a reactionary approach from opposition, or will we see agreement if the Liberals are prepared to embrace change? Where goes the economy? The political winds usually follow. We'll discuss it this week on Australian Agenda. Welcome back to Your Property Empire. Now, during the week, we had an email in from Sarah from Parramatta, 
and she asked, I've got a home on a large plot of land and I'm considering subdividing it and building a second property on it. How hard is it to get council approval and what professionals should I be using? Council approval. Now this is a can of worms. What's your experience with yeah, councils around the country? Don't get me started, all right, because they, they talk about the red tape or the green tape and the changes that have gone on. Uh, I can't really notice them to the degree that they, they talk about. Uh, that, and I'm talking from first-hand experience, not from, from clients. Just trying to get things worked through council. You get staff who change in council. When they change and somebody comes in, they've got to bring the source back up to speed again. Uh, I've just gone through this with a town planner that's left and another person started, so the files sort of all been opened again. And off you go. And it's a very expensive exercise. They're, these people are sitting there doing their work, uh, you know, on all the notes that they've got. And then there's the developer sitting out there with whole holding charges uh, that can generally kill some deals and as you know deals in in those areas of, of development can take two to three years so you could start something when the market's starting to move and you could be getting your development through when the market's crashed and so the key for someone like Sarah especially if these are mum and dad investors is if you're living in your own house yeah. and the development's a bonus that's a different it, story. It's a different know? story, isn't it? Okay. But then trying to take it, because a lot of people do that, and they, they do it well, and then they say, right, I'll do it properly investing now, and they suddenly realise, well, if you've got no tenants in there, it's costing you a lot of money. That's right, and each council has a, a different view on what you can do with a parcel of land. You might have a 2,000 square metre block of land in, in Parramatta where you could do a tremendous amount with that, but you might have that same size land further out, and that council may require a, a subdivision of 1,200 per lot, meaning you can't do a thing. So it changes from place to place. I talk about Adelaide, for example, in Adelaide in the suburbs there, they're, they're far more flexible. You can buy a small block of land and build four apartments on it in suburbia because they understand what medium density is required for, for growth and that's what we're missing out here. So, so for typical people, should they be doing it themselves and trying to learn from experience or just pay the professionals, I'd, either the town yeah. planners and the architects and you do it for you? You get the professionals in because it takes, it's a long drawn out process and even though they cost you money, you could take you twice as long doing it yourself and it generally does and if you think it's going to take you 12 months, add, add add another 12 months and if the deal still works then have a go because if you think it's only going to take you a short period of time it doesn't uh, and it can be doesn't. hundreds of thousands of dollars and especially if you've got to go to land and environment court like a lot of the developers now as soon as they put in their DA they lodge it at I'm uh, land so, and environment. I'm so glad you said that there's one particular council in the northern part of Sydney that any development, you know, if 10 developments are put up in that council, nine of them go straight to land environment at the same time. I and mean, what does that tell you? You think it's solved the issue of green and red tape and so on? They're trying, but they're a long way off it and they really need to sit down with people who have had personal experiences in these areas and interview them and find out what's going on. So do you reckon that red tape could actually affect the property market in terms of supply, Extreme, prices and things like that? It absolutely does. And, and they talk about bubbles and so on in, in the real estate industry or, or that we have a shortage of homes. Well, the only, ca only capital city in Australia that doesn't have a shortage of properties to meet the immigration and population growth is Adelaide. The rest of them are struggling. And they're talking about you know, up to 200,000 homes behind by the year 2020. However they guess that, I don't know. But we're way behind. And part of it is due mainly with the, with the red and, and the green tape that you've got to go through. Now on a positive side of things, in places like New South Wales, quite a few years ago there was changes in the law for things like granny flats, yeah. that suddenly when they want to do those kind of things they can make the process reasonably easy and then have things like compliant developments where you can get an outside person to say, well okay, I'll pay you and you give me the ticket for approval. You, you can, you can get that and they've done that with granny flats. I don't know if they're called granny flats anymore because it's not grannies generally living in them anymore. Uh, but uh, yeah, they, they've done something like that and it's worked. But that's not the main issue. The main issue is trying to cater for a growing immigration and, and population base and they're just not doing it right now. So the advice there is Sarah is get some professional help but um, definitely if you're doing it on your own home then there can be plenty of upside and it can be straightforward so uh, don't be put off by uh, all the information but obviously be aware at the same time. Now for more information on property investing strategies you can always download a copy of my book for free just go to yourempire.com.au and also if you'd like our opinion on your situation just send us some details to chris at yourempire.com.au we do answer every single email so send us a line. So Charles, um, a lot of the time on the show we're talking about the capital city numbers. Yeah. As we've got a bit more time, what are, what are the numbers like away from the capital cities? Is it a different property market? Yeah, and this is, this is what we've been talking about for a while and hoping to get through 
to the general public, there isn't a boom out there. And booms happen when your auction clearance rates are in the 80s and thereabouts. Now, we've had once in this last year that the auction clearance rates on a national level got into the 80s, only once. The rest of the time it's been in, in the uh, early 60s, late 60s mostly, and, and again, we mentioned that we felt that that's where it's going to sit, and that's where it is sitting. Outside of the capital cities, there are areas that have got a lot of property for sale. Uh, I mentioned the other day I was at Naruma at the opening of a Century 21 office there. They're listing property hand over fist. So listing property. And I think that the buyers of those properties are going to be people that have now, the ones that lost money in the equity markets or the ones that didn't get the dividends through, got a bonus in the last year. It's called capital gain. So those people in, in, the, in the cities got this capital gain. And I think they're now going to start thinking, hey, you know what? I could sell now in Sydney. I could go down to Naruma. I could buy a lovely ocean uh, view home for a lot less money than what I'm selling for and have money in the bank. And I think that's what's going to start to happen over 2014. So those markets are flat, a lot of stock, and I think that the buyers need to start feeding out from the capital cities, which is starting to happen. Cool. Now, we'll actually just jump to a break, but when we come back, we'll actually go through some of the more of the stats around the country to see exactly what's happening. You're watching Your Property Empire. Thank you. That'll be $10, please. OK, here's all of my card details. $250, please. OK, here's all of my card details. That'll be $150, please. OK, here's all of my card details. <laughs> oh, no. Stop giving out your card numbers all over the net. <laughs> no one sees your financial details when you check out with PayPal. If Labor is to be competitive at the next election, it needs to muscle up to the Coalition on Economic Management. Our guest this week on Australian Agenda is the Shadow Treasurer, Chris Bowen. From the non-sale of Grain Corp through to taxation reform, there are huge issues in the economic space. Will Bowen advocate a reactionary approach from opposition, or will we see agreement if the Liberals are prepared to embrace change? Where goes the economy, the political winds usually follow. We'll discuss it this week on Australian Agenda. Welcome back to the show. Now, time to jump to Charles Tarby again, who's got the latest numbers from around the country. What's happening? I know Mr. 100% Tom Panos, yes. it's not the same around the country, yes, is it? Yes. Tom, as we've always said, is a great auctioneer in, in selling in great suburbs. So, uh, But across the country, it's, it sort of levels out a bit. You know, you get your 80s and that in Sydney uh, as one in some areas, but not all of it. But the, the national average actually was 66.9%. Last week was 65.4%. And the week before that was in the 60s as well. So it's really plateaued out again. If you look at the chart, you'll start to see that, that levelling out of it. But Sydney itself hit 72.7% clearance rates and Melbourne hit 67.9%. Now, the only other capital cities were Canberra and Adelaide that were above 50%. And Adelaide has been consistently above 50%. But, but there is movement, but steady movement. And that's really what we want. We want to see that marketplace where it doesn't go crazy, where buyers can go to auction across the country and bid fairly and squarely and, and get the Because a lot of people did get scared off when the numbers were really high and, and there's all these stories of 50 or 100 grand over reserve. Yeah, it can take you to lots of properties that don't sell at auction, uh, Chris. Uh, there's uh, significant numbers. So we've got to, people are going to be mindful of that and not, not get caught up in those suburbs that are going crazy right now. So have we got more stock coming on the market? 
Well, 1.18% increase this week over last week, and it was 5.08% last week. So it's starting to slow down a little bit, but I think the stock will start to flow now, and that's where I think the change will come. And I, I think the prices are being set by the sellers now, not by the buyers rushing, by sellers coming in and saying, well, we want more now. And New Zealand market was only slightly up in terms of, uh, or in Auckland market, slightly up in terms of properties on the market in general, but they had a 42.6% drop this week over last week and the number of properties coming onto the market. So that change is already happening and New Zealand is one I'm watching. Um, we talked about the, the time lag with rents. What's happening with rents at the moment? Yeah, well, again, pretty steady all the way through. Sydney 12.66. You've got uh, down Victoria at 7.43. And you also have down in, in Western Australia at 18, just over 18%. So they're 18.45%. So they're sitting now at the, at the 18, 12.89% overall across the country. Still into 12, still flat, uh, still moving in that same direction. Yep. Same with the, the vacancy rates. Uh, 26 for Sydney on the vacancy rates. Uh, and then you go back down to to um, uh, Melbourne at 3.43 and Perth at 5.74. So a 3.92% vacancy rate across the country, sitting at that level again. So we're starting to see that move downwards, uh, uh, sorry, upwards and affecting landlords in time to come, Chris. Wonderful. And very, very quickly, should you buy now or after Christmas? Well, I'd buy if I could find something I like. I wouldn't be waiting. I wouldn't be setting any time. You would too. So. Perfect advice. <laughs> you so if you too. find the right property, go and buy it. Yeah. Thanks for joining us this evening. Thank you, Charles Tarby and Tom Panis, as usual. Until next week, I'm Chris Gray. Good night. The information featured in this program is general in nature and therefore should not be relied upon. Guests appearing on the program may have commercial arrangements with some of the companies mentioned. Before making any investment, insurance or financial planning decisions, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you.